Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We broadcast live on Mondays from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving greater success, and sustaining that greater success, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's guest is Ben Goldsmith. He is the tournament director for the Hawaii Tennis Open, which will feature six men and six women who are some of the best professional tennis players in the world at the Blaisdell Arena this December 21st to the 23rd. Headlining the men will be U.S. Open finalist Kei Nishikori, and headlining the women will be Wimbledon champion and French Open champion Garbin Muguruza. Today, we are going beyond world-class tennis. Ben. Thank you. Thank you for being here, and no. thank you for doing what you do in Hawaii. Thank you for having us. Before we talk about the, the big announcement that you're going to make, um, can you share with me some of your history growing up in Texas? Sure. Uh, born and raised in Texas. I uh, spent all my life around Austin. Um, my first job was Dell. Uh, Dell Computer? Uh, Dell Computers. Uh, well, actually, that's my second job, as my wife would say. My, <laughs> my first was throwing milk at Walmart, but <laughs> that's, not, that's a high school job. But uh, Dell, and then that's what led me into tennis. Great. Now, what was your official position when you were at Dell Computer? Director, I worked my way up the corporate ladder, but my last job role was director of sports marketing. And how long were you in that role for? Eight years. Wow. And so did you sponsor a lot of big pro tennis tournaments around the world? Worldwide, we did over 100, 107 tennis tournaments all over the world. Great, wow. Now, do you play any tennis? Not much. Just, Not much. Just with my wife. Oh, great. Now, when did you start getting into tennis? Uh, on a whim. Uh, me and my best friend was actually on the way to Vegas for a, a boys weekend because he just got divorced and we were going to Vegas and we got tired and pulled over and Palm Springs, California, and the next morning he had a, a business meeting in Los Angeles and I didn't have anything to do in Palm Springs and I was looking for something to do and saw that there was this little tennis tournament which ended up being a very big tennis tournament that I attended and I noticed that all of our com com competition at, H at Dell was there and yeah. we weren't and that's what led Dell into becoming a, a major sponsor in tennis. Was that the Indian Wells tournament that you were saying? It, at that time it was the, well it was the BNP Paribas yeah. today and I, I think it was an insurance company at the time. Great. What is, what is it about tennis that you love? Uh, there's nothing about tennis I don't love. I love <laughs> the one-on-one. -on -one. I love the fact that it's there's very few sports in the world that you are, you have nobody but yourself to blame in tennis. It's all on you. Sure. Everything is on you. The mental, it's all mental. And tennis is a mental game. And I, I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> it's amazing to watch. I, I love tennis. Um, you know, it's, you take all the blame when you lose and you take all the glory when you win. Exactly right. <laughs> now, you bought a pro tennis tournament? I did. After years of being with Dell, I saw the possibilities and thought, you know what, this looks easy. Uh, I'm just going to buy one of these, <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> and it's not so easy. Uh, I will say that. But yes, that was the first thing I did after leaving Dell is bought a tennis tournament. We started out in Carlsbad and that led us to another one in uh, San Antonio, Texas, and we then moved Carlsbad here to Hawaii, which became the Hawaii Open okay. um, at the 125 level event. Great. So let's talk about that. So you moved that your tournament to Hawaii. Was that almost three years ago now? It was three, almost three. In fact, it was a little over three years ago that we were sitting at home trying to figure out what we should do with Carlsbad. <laughs> we were the first WTA 125 in North America, and probably crazy we decided to do it the week of thanksgiving in california and we thought it'll either be a huge hit or it won't yeah and we just couldn't get the fans to come out in southern california mm -hmm. for that time of year it's just too cold the yeah. weather's just too 
ups, up and down. I know I'm saying cold in California and everybody's going to be making fun of me in 20 <laughs> minutes, but that's the truth. It was just too cold for the tennis fans and we were looking for a new place to put it and we were sitting at home watching Fed Cup and I couldn't believe the audience the size for Fed Cup. And on I, the Outer Island? Yep, yeah, on the Outer Island and I said if they can get them to go to another island when all the population is in Honolulu, this is a place for a tennis tournament, and that's what started us looking at Hawaii for the future. Okay, so so that's when you moved your WTA event to Hawaii. Yep. And you 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 ran the tournament for the last two years at Central Oahu Regional Park. Yep. And it was a, a great event. Great event. We, in fact, the first year sold more tickets than, in fact, both ticket, both both years we sold more tickets than any other 125 worldwide. Yeah. So our crowd size was there. We just couldn't get enough of them to come from Oahu out to Corp. It, it's it's a drive. Yeah. And yeah. the weather was kind of tough on us at, <laughs> at times <laughs> in November at Corp. Well, I, I think it's a, it's such a great situation how, you know, how and why you move the WTA, your tournament, to Hawaii. I mean, that's going to benefit so many people in Hawaii, tennis fans and non-tennis fans, but it's going to really help tourism as well. It does, and especially with the additions that we'll talk about later, the new changes coming, yeah. we see a huge influx of tourists coming in just for the Hawaii Open. Uh, something we haven't seen ever, to be honest with you, in any of the tournaments that we've run our own. And what the excitement of building about this year is true, and uh, it's phenomenal the amount of Japanese tourists that are coming in for this year's Hawaii Open. Well, let's let's uh, let's talk about it right now. Let's make the official announcement, Ben. Sure. Uh, so you have the honors to make the official announcement right here on TV. Well, so go ahead. We are going to change from a, six, uh, a WTA 125 event to a six men, six women Hawaii Open. With that changes, we're moving to the Bladesdell Arena. We are obviously, as you see on the poster, adding men and the women. We have some of the biggest names in tennis. Uh, playing this year's Hawaii Open, and we think it'll be a huge, successful event. Now, I, I'm so excited for this tournament because in the early 90s, I remember the Davis Cup coming to the Big Island at Mount Alani, and Agassiz, McEnroe, and Sampras were playing against Argentina, and I got excited for that. But it was on the Outer Island. I, I, I wish it was on Oahu. This tournament that you're bringing here, this gets me even more excited than the Davis Cup because it's six women, like you said, six men, and it's, it's going to be amazing in the Blaisdell Arena. So it's not weather dependent. No weather, let it rain. <laughs> the first time of the Hawaii Open, let it rain. Uh, you know, when we first decided to do this, we wanted to bring the biggest names, and we knew that was important to our tennis fans. And Kay is by far one of the biggest names in men's tennis, and... Garbine's record stands for herself with two Grand Slam champions. Yeah, let's talk about Kei Nishikori right now. Uh, Kei Nishikori, his highest ranking was number four in the world. Correct. Okay, number four in the world. He is the U.S. Open finalist. He's the most famous athlete in Japan. Not only tennis, but in period. all of Japan, all in of Japan, sports. in all sports, yeah. right now. Can you tell me more about why K is going to be such a great draw for Hawaii? When we when we talked about it, we wanted to make sure our number one audience, of course, here in Hawaii, but our number two was the visitors. And how do we get the visitors from Waikiki to come out? At that time, we were looking at court, but then we found Bladesdale and decided to do Bladesdale. But we knew we needed an Asian, and a Japanese tennis player is king. Yeah. And with a K's resume. It, didn't, you don't have to look at number two or number three on the list to see who you should get. Now, whether we could get him at the time, we didn't know, but we ended up getting Kay, and we, we see nothing but greatness coming from this. Well, that gets me very excited because I love Kay Nishikori, and everyone in Hawaii is going to love Kay Nishikori if they don't already. But he's beaten the top players in the world. He's beaten Nadal and Djokovic and Federer and all those guys, so it's, it's going to be exciting. This is real talent. These are real players. And Garbine with her two Grand Slams. This uh, Rick Fried's Rick Fried's quote that will go out tomorrow on our press release says yep. this is the best tennis 
players field that he's ever seen in Oahu. And if Rick Safree said it, I'll, I'll take it. I agree. I had Rick Freed on my show two weeks ago, and he's the chairman of the board of the Hawaii Tourism Authority. And this your tournament is being presented by the Hawaii Tourism Authority. They, they certainly are our biggest sponsor, and we are very thankful for the HTA. They've done nothing but good, good that, for us. That's huge support. I, I, I love hearing that. Now, Ben, let's talk about Garbine Muguruza. She's headlining the women. Uh, she is the 2016 French Open champion. She is the 2017 Wimbledon champion. And she's a former number one player in the world. How are you able to get these players? You know, it, it's not easy. Uh, it's a lot of negotiation with the players. Uh, they First off, it has to work in the number one thing with the player is does it work with my calendar? And with us moving from the court in November to the Bladesdale in December, it allowed us a unique opportunity. Every player in the world is leaving most of them are in Florida uh, yeah. during the off season, doing their getting ready for Brisbane. Brisbane is a huge tournament with a lot of prize money, and they're flying right across Hawaii. And so it logistically made sense for us to move our dates to Christmas and get the players on the way to. It's not a hard sell to get a no. player to come to Hawaii. No, I mean it's very if, convenient. If it works out for their schedule, then it can be done, and that's why we we see nothing but big names coming in the years to come for for us at the Bladesdale. I think your format is absolutely brilliant. Having six men, for example, the tennis fans are gonna be able to see someone like Kaney Shikori at least two times. Rather than having someone, a top seed, lose in the first round and then they're done at some of these big Grand Slam tournaments. This is brilliant how you have this format. And the way we got to this format was simply because of what our what we were selling in ticket sales at the Bladesdale, it told us that, hey, the weekend is the busiest point. That's when everybody's able to come. Everybody still has jobs. They can't do it in the week. And we thought, how do we condense this down into that works for the players, works for us, and the fans? And three days at the Bladesdale, in fact, we're the only invitational tournament anywhere in the world that's more than one day. Yeah. Most of the exhibitions are in and out within four hours. And we have all these players playing a regular style format tennis match for three days, yeah. and that's not saying anything great on us. Uh, it's because this time of year, it's important for the players to warm up for Brisbane, and that's why, in fact, Kay's people required us to have a guarantee that he would win, lose, or draw, he will play two matches. Great. And that's not anything besides him wanting to prepare for his the new season. Yeah, so for example, he's gonna be seated number one, yeah. and He'll have a bye in the first round, yep. and so he'll play on the second day, the semifinals. Yep. And whether he wins or loses, he'll play on the third day, third day, either in the finals or for third and fourth place. Correct. And same with the women, with Garbin Muguruza. Yes. But can you share some other uh, men players that are coming uh, sure. for this event? Ryan Harrison, a young up-and-coming American. Jared yeah. Donaldson. These guys have already got a pretty decent resume behind them, and we think that they have all the possibilities to break even. In fact, Mc, uh, Mackenzie McDonald, uh, yeah. he was coached by a local here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you see him go quite a ways in the U.S. Open this year. Yeah, and for the women, in addition to Garbeen, who else do you have? Coming? We have our past 2006-17 champion, C.C. Bellis, or excuse me, 2016 champion, C.C. Bellis. Okay. And then we have Kayla Day, Jeannie Bouchard, which is a phenomenal in tennis. Exactly. Everybody knows who Jeannie is. And Christina McHale. Coco. And Coco Vanderway. Yeah. And the biggest name in America right now besides the Williams sisters is always going to be Coco. Yeah. <laughs> now, the format uh, in terms of match play, it, uh, is it a two out of three sets? That's two out of three, but the third set is a super tiebreak. I like that. And I like that. It makes it a little bit easier on the players and the fans. And, yeah. and for TV purposes, we know we can pretty much guarantee you how long our matches are going to go and makes it easier for our TV partners. Yeah, and then you're going to also have a special, some special exhibition matches um, Saturday evening that'll benefit who? The Volcano Relief Effort. We've chosen three charities, lo three local partners that uh, CNN recommended, and we thought, you know what, that's that's an easy one, easy one for us. We wanted to support the Volcano Relief Effort and bringing out some of our biggest names, and every ticket sold that night will go to 
directly to the charities. That that's that's absolutely amazing, and that's so great of you to do that for the volcano victims because I mean they're they're going to be misplaced for a long time. Long time. We saw the ongoing need, and that's why, of course, we couldn't do anything at the current moment when you, they need it the most. But we we felt that they'll still be needing help in December, and this will be years to years to come to recuperate from this. Great. Ben, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to continue talking beyond world-class tennis. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my guest, Ben Goldsmith. We will be back in a quick 60 seconds. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff, but I really like energy stuff, so I'm gonna keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stand Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're gonna talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're gonna definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is tournament director for the Hawaii Tennis Open, Ben Goldsmith. Also, I'd like to welcome Jared Karsten on the show. He is the head tennis pro of the very popular Kailua Racquet Club, and he is the face and the voice of the Hawaii Tennis Open. And today, we are going beyond world-class tennis. Jared, great having you here. Thanks for having me. I know you grew up in Florida, but I don't know how you ended up coming to Hawaii. Can you tell me how your Hawaii connection happened? It's a, it's a story, everybody's got their own story coming out here and you kind of realize that Hawaii was meant to be for a lot of people. I, uh, I left Florida uh, to go to college out here. My mom had gotten a job uh, teaching at Hawaii Pacific University, so I kind of followed her out here. I'd never been, came out, and, uh, and within a week of moving to Hawaii, I'd always I'd worked in the tennis industry through high school. Uh, I looked for a local club to get involved with and found the Kailua Racquet Club immediately, and that was 15 years ago. Well, Bruce Nagel is phenomenal with what he's accomplished and what he's still doing at Kailua Racquet Club. And it's, I know it's a team effort. Can you share more about that? Yeah, uh, Kailua Racquet Club, wonderful. It's just a hidden gem on the east side of Oahu. Uh, Bruce Nagel is the general manager and tennis director over there and took me under his wing as soon as I got there, kind of saw that I had potential uh, as a teaching pro as well as other things off the court, which has led to uh, many opportunities that, that really have gotten me sitting here in this chair with you a little bit that have led to getting involved in tennis tournaments and being on the microphone in front of the camera and just helping spread the love of tennis in Hawaii. Yeah, and at Kailua Racquet Club, uh, you know, you, you guys run some of the best local tennis events uh, in the state. Can you share more about some of those specific events that you guys have there? Yeah, this is, it's really special. We've got the Kailua night doubles, the men's night doubles that happens at the end of every summer where we're coming up, I think we just finished our 48th tournament. Uh, we're coming up on 50 years here pretty soon and that uh, gathers the best you know, amateur, open, pro, college players uh, on Oahu for every night for two weeks. It's really special. One of the biggest club tournaments that you'll see in the country. And we run the a women's one and now a mixed doubles one combined with that um, a couple weeks before Thanksgiving in November. And we're talking about several hundred people at our club watching, you know, dozens and dozens of matches every night for two weeks, twice a year. Uh, absolutely phenomenal event. And it's nothing like anything you've ever seen at a local club. You're absolutely right. I, I love attending your events there. And the Kailua Racquet Club members are so much fun. They have so much passion in what they do. Now, I want to ask you, Jared, how did you connect with Ben? 
in the in his Hawaii Tennis Open tournament. Well, this this was pretty cool. Uh, ben, when he first came to uh, Oahu, when they started talking about bringing this tournament out here, I think they'd already decided to do it. Ben did his due diligence and went around to all the local clubs and met with pros and GMs and just kind of got his name out there and really just kind of want to introduce people, maybe make some friends. Um, ben and I met during one of those meetings, just kind of happened, and I, I think I reached out to him afterwards through an email and let him know that, um, hey, Ben, I, there's there you guys may need me, be in need of an MC, and I may be the only person in Hawaii that regularly MCs tennis events along For with sure. along with my boss Bruce. We do interviews and introductions, and we really kind of treat players in our club event as if it's a pro tournament. And we had I had some footage of that on on film that I could send over to him, and and he was receptive right away. We set up a meeting, and and that's it's kind of happened so quickly from there. We've been working together ever since. So Ben. For the last two years in your WTA event at Central Oahu Regional Park for the women's event, you made Jared the voice and the face of the Hawaii Tennis Open. What do you love so much about Jared? You know, we thought it was important that we have a local perspective in this. And there's very few people that in Hawaii in tennis that don't know who this guy is. <laughs> and when I heard his voice, we, we had other announcers that wanted to do because it is Hawaii. And, but we just knew this was pre-beard. And yeah. I said, this guy's going to be the face of the Hawaii Open. And I said, Jared, I'm a little concerned about your face on TV. <laughs> so this was the answer right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's the response. Yeah. But it's a good, healthy beard. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jared, why, why are you even more excited for this Hawaii Tennis Open that's going to be December 21st to the 23rd in the Blaisdell Arena? What, what gets you more excited about this one? Well, the WTA event that we ran out here, the Hawaii Open out at Central Oahu Regional Park, already had the the high, the world class tennis um, that we. It was just phenomenal to see that what our players did here when they went when they went out and and toured the next year. They were just fantastic players. Now that quality of tennis is going to be raised now quite a bit. And what we've got is the big names with Kay and Garbine and Jeannie and Coco. This is going to be an outrageous kind of spectacle to watch in an unbelievable scenario being in Waikiki indoors there will be no weather issues like we've talked about we had in the past <laughs> uh, the fans are in for something incredible not just tennis fans this will be something that I think sports fans um, really a fan of any sport is going to want to watch this event happen the level has always been there now we have the big names and we're just kind of doubling down on how good these players are uh, i totally agree with you because this event doesn't happen every day it, it's a once a year event on Hon in honolulu this is fantastic I, I love this ben now ben there's no professional tournament in japan at the moment no and so this will be the closest K we'll get to playing in Japan. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest pluses for us, to be honest with you. So that, I mean, that has to attract so many Japanese people that are here already in Hawaii and, and in Japan, wouldn't you think? Both. We have, in fact, my wife told me yesterday we needed to hire some additional staff just to help out with the emails coming from Japan. Yeah. Well, requesting VIP packages from Japan. Sure. And that's not a bad problem to have. No, that's a, that's <laughs> a great thing. I, I think it's also a great thing for, for sponsors because this is such a special event. And wouldn't you agree that sponsors would really We We this? have seen an increase in our sponsorship sales. We also believe we're still looking for the title sponsor. We would love to name this anything Hawaii Open, of course. Yeah. But uh, we do see in the future years that this is helping our sponsorship sales out. We think by bringing in the biggest names in tennis, it certainly can't help you, hurt you. Can you share, Ben, about um, how many TV stations this is going to be televised on worldwide? Sure. Right now in North America, it's one TV channel, and that's Tennis Channel. They have an exclusive deal with us, so every match will be on Tennis Channel in North America. But for all of Asia, it's Fox Sports Asia, and that includes 57 different channels of different countries. And then Wow Wow Network in Japan, we just signed a deal with ESPN International to broadcast it all with the ESPN International Breach, which is all South America and Europe. Great. All total, we're in 109 countries. Wow, that's a lot. That's, that's a ton. 
That's great publicity for Hawaii it and is. for every sponsor. It is, and we own the, the rights to that. So we produce everything and everything, that, all the content is owned by us, which most sporting events don't own the, the rights to that. And so it allows us to do things like the charity exhibition and put that on TV where most places just won't do that. Yeah, I love that. Now, Jared, um, on Thursday, that Thursday before the tournament starts on Friday, there is a big pro-am at Kailua Racquet Club. Can you share more about what's going to be happening on that Thursday? Uh, part of the kind of many VIP experiences that are available with this tournament, uh, one of them is the Pro-Am, where, where a lot of the players uh, will be at the Kailua Racquet Club um, participating in, in uh, matches and tournament, uh, tournament style matches that the guests can play along with, and there'll be kind of a clinic involved um, as well in that. It's a big part of why uh, I got involved in this too, was it was a, a way to connect some of the uh, local tennis players with a big event coming in here and uh, also bringing what we have at the Kailua Racquet Club, the ability to host an event on the local level, uh, really was a big connection for us um, why we eventually, or initially, uh, got connected. Yeah, and, and the, the big Kailua men's night doubles tournament just wrapped up a few weeks ago, and Henrik Bodie and his partner won it. Can you tell <laughs> Tell us what, in addition, what's going to happen for them. These uh, our, our tournaments. Uh, luckily, Ben and Hawaii Open look so highly at our tournaments that they've offered the winner of the men's night doubles and the women's night doubles uh, the, an opportunity to play against two of the pros from the Hawaii Open in part of a uh, charity exhibition that will be going on uh, Saturday night during our event. Yes, Hendrick just won it for the third time with a third different partner. These guys are as good of players as you can really see anywhere in the country. And I think that our top players here in Hawaii will have a chance to hang in there with some of the best pros in the world. And we're going to find out. I believe so as well. Uh, ben, you've been involved with so many tournaments uh, over the years. I mean, everywhere. Why, why are you even more excited about this upcoming tournament in December? It's all about the future, and I believe that the future looks really bright in Hawaii, uh, given the time of year that we're in. Um, it, we just see no negatives for us in the future, moving our dates to the December. And how is it going to be more special than fans going to see a Fed Cup or the WT event, a, a, a event like last year? You know, Fed Cup is great and we love Fed Cup, we've supported Fed Cup, but this is not Fed Cup. This is not a three day, one match every day, two matches every day. This is a full blown tournament just condensed into three days where, and our players are all looking to get ready for Brisbane. And that's a huge payday in Brisbane and we know they'll bring their A game and we think every year that we'll grow this into bigger names and possibly change a little tweaking here and there along the way, but sure. we have huge plans coming for the year after next. Yeah, I think the potential is, I mean, it's, it's limitless, basically. It is definitely limitless, and the players love these dates. That is our key win for us, is the players want to come here. Yeah. Well, all of my tennis students, they're so excited to come to this tournament, and Jared, I, I believe How's all the club members and their kids thinking about this tournament? Oh, with the Kailua Racquet Club, we're kind of center of the tennis universe out here in Hawaii. Yeah. So our club members are so excited. You figure everyone who's a member at our club is going to be there for at least one of those days. All the kids are, I mean, this is, it's a game. It's a sport. The kids is who are who we're thinking about. And you know that they're going to be in droves. They're going to be lining up uh, to watch these. There's some of their tennis heroes out there. I agree. I want to thank you guys so much for being on the show and really making the uh, official announcement here. And we want everyone to really be excited about it in Hawaii and around the world. So really thank you guys for being here. No, thanks for having us. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Rusty Komori encouraging you to get your tickets for this amazing tennis event here in Honolulu. And I also want to encourage you to constantly strive for a superior standard of excellence every day and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.